All right, guys. This is Molly Gordon. Welcome to the Wholeness Hangout, formerly the Happiness Hangout. I'm here, and Craig, I realize I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce your last name. Is it Palsfus? We'll take that. Uh, the first S is generally silent, so it's Palfus. Palfus. But people, yeah. they Palsfus, and then they get it right how it's spelled. Great. So Palfus. Um, whom I'm delighted to have with me. Craig and I connected through Facebook uh, through our mutual interest and appreciation of the three principles as articulated by the late um, philosopher and theosopher Sidney Banks. And Craig is a published psychologist and personal transformation specialist. He is pioneering two related cutting edge edge resources for personal transformation. One is psychospiritual, and that's the three principles that I alluded to, and one is neuroscience based. Now Craig says that stress can be transformed into calm and empowerment with one single thought, with one insight into the nature of how human experience is created from the inside out, moment to moment. He also says that there is now a way to energize and awaken the prefrontal cortex of the brain. The prefrontal cortex is the most highly evolved part of the brain and the part necessary for sustainable change and all high-end human understanding, experience, and performance. Craig's website, and I'll post this on the Google Plus page as well, is higherbrainliving.com and that's where you can learn more about some of the things that Craig and I will be chatting about and for you of those those of you who don't happen to know me um, I'm Molly Gordon and I am the host of the Wholeness Hangouts and hold on just a second while I get this link to Craig's website posted oh. HTTP. There we go. Now, if you are watching this at the on the uh, on Google Plus, there is a chat function on the page under the Hangout screen, and I invite you to make comments, share your observations and insights, and ask questions from within that screen. So welcome, welcome, Craig. Thank you very much, Molly. It's a pleasure. How are you? Fantastic. I love <laughs> to um, have my focus on this topic or these topics and to share with people who are curious because they've made such a profound difference in my life and, and others. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, I love it. I was reflecting lately how fortunate I am, we are, that we get to do this kind of work that keeps our attention and our orientation on these uh, enlivening and enlightening and uh, and holding truths and realities. So it's pretty cool. It really brings you into the moment, doesn't it? Because it's, exactly. it's really a moment-to-moment -moment consciousness or, um, I mean, there's so many ways to describe it, but, or orientation in a sense, to yourself, to life, to this moment, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what I, part of what I love, it just draws me more and more into what's real, and what's real is in this moment, right, where it, it's, it, the past doesn't exist, the future doesn't exist, it's right here in this moment, and the more we awaken to and connect to and feel the essence of what this moment is and what's in this moment, it can't help but clear the system evolve us and bring us into that peace and that joy and that um, that kind of fulfillment and that kind of living that we're actually designed for by the intelligence that is creating this moment you know so it's it's all integral I use that term a lot and it's it's uh, it's wonderful to awaken to it and it and interesting what hits me as I say that is in that sense, you know, you and I, in a, in a sense, are, are unique in that we have this understanding to the degree we do and that we're able to center all or much of our work around it. 
in another sense, we're not unique. This is the same position every person is in. They're faced with themselves, their lives, this moment, and what that means and what the potential in that is. And the degree to which we can awaken to that is our gift to ourselves. And then we can help each other out with that. Yes. It's so cool. It is. It is very cool. <laughs> I was talking to a client at lunch with a client before Christmas, and she said, "How are you?" And I said, "Oh, I'm so happy. It's stupid." <laughs> <laughs> well, you're staying in that, in that, in the moment, which yeah. you know. Now, as I say that, see, part of living in the moment is this flow of insight, often, isn't it? And it's interesting, as I say, in the moment. You know, I I used to see that apparently and feel like that was kind of a like being in a real still pond or something mm -hmm. you know, like that and, it, and you, we can experience it that way but the more deeply I'm connected to the moment it's quote unquote moving yes it's getting deeper and deeper it's like a vortex that's pulling you and calling you and you can resist it and in fact we're resisting it far too much and we're not even aware that we're doing that and as we wake up to that we can let go um, to that vortex which pulls us in to who we really are and what this moment really is and it awakens us and uh, as I said before it clears us, it heals us, it, it reveals what we need to see and know now and now and now and that that revelation as you go is part of the, the uh, the childlike discovery process that happens. It is. It is. There I like what what I hear you saying about movement. It's like stillness is this can be a kind of ideal that we associate with being in the present or in the moment. And yet there's a great deal of movement and there would have to be because it's an unfolding. It's life happening. So who knows what's what's you going on? I don't know if this is accurate, but what just popped into my mind is um, it's at the speed of the Big Bang. Could be. How fast is that? From exactly. nothing to everything or, or, or at least from nothing to a huge physical expression in instants mm -hmm. and then in 13.8 billion years, whatever the speed of that is, that's the speed of us in that vortex. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> So, I'd like to share, many people watching this, uh, some people watching this are going to be familiar with Sydney Banks and the Three Principles, and many people are not. And I'd like to start there, if you would, Craig, and then move into the neuroscience that you've um, learned about and are so involved in these days. Does that sound like a plan? Sure. Sounds great. So, I'd love to hear the story of you and Sid. How did you come up across this and, and what happened for you? I'll give you the short version. Um, I had had some profound personal awakening, let's call it, prior to the three principles and that completely reoriented my life to what maybe today I would call inside out. And I was a young, I was uh, 28 years old, um, young professional working in the helping professions as a social worker and as a psychologist or becoming a psychologist I believe at that point. And the way I understood myself and others and the way I worked with people was very different from what I was taught in graduate school and, and, and other programs which they just taught the best they knew, but it was still as I, I gravitated towards the positive approaches, but they were still outside in. And so I began to work very differently with the, I had a small private practice on the side of my full-time job, and the experience of those sessions and what happened with the clients was amazing, um, but I felt um, there were moments where I would scare myself because I realized, uh, well, what I told myself was, I don't know anybody that's working this way, and if the people who trained me and licensed me could see me, they would try to get my license yanked because they would say, you're not taking people back into the past, you're promoting denial, 
you know, all, and 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 um, and and I began to question whether I should stay in the field. So as the way life works, or can work, um, it's trying to shorten this. The universe tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Hey, look at this," and it was the three principles. The way that happened was in my full-time work, I had made some offhanded comment during a lunch discussion with a number of my colleagues that apparently conveyed this inside-out perspective. And this uh, PhD pulled me aside and said, do you know about this new psychology? And I said, no, what new psychology? And he said, you know, do you know about Joe Bailey? And I said, no, who's Joe Bailey? And he just said, I can't believe it. He says, I've been in Joe Bailey's men's group for a couple of years, and he just went away and got a couple of weeks of training and came back and said, I'm doing everything different, and he explained it. And he said, and that's what you were talking about at lunch. You've got to find out about this. Well, I had learned, I had been on the bandwagons prior to this, so I had learned, wait, you know, just let it unfold. Don't go, oh, great, we need a breakthrough. Well, so it was like, so in a, in a few weeks to months, things unfolded where I connected with Joe Bailey and Chris Heath, who were just starting a, a clinic in Minnesota, and through them, I got introduced to Sydney Banks. And we as a staff would help um, sponsor uh, and, and his presentations um, in Minnesota. So then that was in the early 80s. So through that process, I got to not only hear Sid in those presentations, but get to know him to a certain degree personally, have lunches and dinners with him and, um, and his wife, wives actually. Um, his first wife passed away. Yeah, at separate times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, and if anybody has ever, I mean, you can get a sense of the value and the experience of listening to Sid by watching the DVDs or listening to audios. But you really, I mean, to be there in person is even greater. And and there's just really no way to convey the value and the depth and profundity of who Sid was and what he was giving away. Um, you can, I can feel what's happening in me right now just going way deep into that appreciation and that heart. And, um, you know, in my work I attempt to, well, I share my understanding in the moment of principles and, or let them express themselves through me and sometimes I attempt to share my understanding of what Sid was saying and teaching but really it's 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 something we have to see for ourselves and if you're attracted to this I know at first I remember my son was a teenager when I first started getting you know, actually was even a child but later on in my career he'd come through the room and he'd see me watching some of these videos and he'd go, wow, why doesn't that, why don't they ever get to the point? And I laughed and I said, they're always getting to the point. Well, that son eventually was profoundly, and actually all my sons, I have three of them, but he was profoundly impacted by the, by the um, principles and is extremely articulate about it and just jumping ahead a little. And then through the neuro neuroscience program we both got trained in, he literally had an enlightenment experience akin to SIDS and it's, it's an amazing story to share and actually he's somebody you'd probably like to interview on here alone or with me because of course I have to you know rib him as he, as he yes. shares yes. I think we should do a father-son thing <laughs> yeah that would be fun yeah um, so I mean, maybe that's enough in terms of how I connected with Sid because uh, my I'm tempted to go further to try to express something about him and I know that's just hear? for for people who don't know the three principles. What did you hear? That, oh, that, that is a huge question, and so that's like saying, um, well, I could say, well, I heard the ocean. Do you want the ocean now, or can I? I can I can just give you a drop. Okay. <laughs> and actually, that's one of the. There's a quote from uh, Rumi that I, I love that that is one of my favorite, favorite quotes. I believe it's a, a lot, couple of lines from a, a poem that says, you know, many know that the drop is in the ocean, 
but few know that the ocean is in the drop. And that each of us as a drop has that entire ocean in us and all the and Sid had this elegant, simple way that evolved for him talking about the three universal principles of mind, consciousness, and thought. And he would say right off the bat, and rightly so, don't get caught in my words or, or, or what you hear me saying. Get a feeling for where they're coming from and what they're pointing to. And the more a person can do that, even as we talk right now amongst ourselves and those that are listening and watching, um, you get a feeling for what it's being pointed to, and you cannot feel that if you're not connecting to it. Mm -hmm. So we tell people, don't worry about if you don't think you can understand it. Do you like the feeling you're feeling as you listen? And if you do, he said, you're getting it, and that's true. You can't experience any. There's nothing outside of you. It's all in. If if the ocean is in the drop, then it's all inside of us. So if you're getting a feeling of interest, you're getting a feeling of this is conveying something very clearly or maybe not so clearly, but you like that and you want to follow that, you're going inside yourself to more and more of a source of that very intelligence and potential inside of you. Mm. I hope to some people that's going to be crystal clear what I just said, and to some people that might sound like a riddle. In either case, it doesn't matter. Just receive it and see where it takes you. <laughs> right, right. I'm going to try something here really quickly. Uh, hold on. I'm going to. Um, what I'm going to do is see if I can show people a link, a very simple link that they can use to watch this. If you're not already watching this on Google, you can go to uh, a page on Google and watch the Hangout there, and there's a chat. And what I'm going to see if I can do is share my screen with everyone. So just hold tight. Uh, let's see. Do screen share. Screen share. Do this really quickly. So there is the um, URL. HTTP colon forward slash, forward slash, B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash, Craig hyphen 3P, that's C-R-A-I-G dash, numeral 3, with a capital P, as in principles. So that's B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash, Craig dash, numeral three, uppercase P. So if you're not already there, you can use that link to go there, and that will give you the option of entering comments and questions in the chat. So how cool is that, Craig? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, one of the fun things about doing this is being able to experience the, the miracle of our technology. So it's like, yeah. whoa. Uh, yeah. so, um, so that's really wonderful. Now, you had experience just as a human being and in your work as a psychologist with the potential of the insights of insight to completely transform our experience of the world in a moment. Yes. And then you learn some things about neuroscience that lit something else up or something related up for you. What's that about? Well, let me start this way because it really connects to my the level of understanding I had about the three principles that time this happened. And for those who haven't um, been exposed to the three principles, let me give a short definition, but be careful as you listen, <laughs> because um, there are innumerable creative ways to describe and define these three principles. And human beings have done that throughout history, but Sid came up with such a simple, elegant way 
that, that that's what I gravitate to most of the time. So by mind, consciousness, and thought, those are the three principles, we mean universal or even divine mind, divine consciousness, and divine thought. So as principles, they're formless, and they express themselves and create the form of the experience we have moment to moment. So as individuals, we are and are using those principles to create our moment moment experience from the inside out, whether we know that or not. And to reawaken to that, even to a degree of saying, wait, that's right. If I change my perspective, if I change how I think about something, my whole world and experience can completely change. I've got a colleague who I'm doing online coaching with about the three principles who is herself a psychologist or licensed counselor and has done speaking around the country. Um, and she uses an example of, you know, listening to the, the young child crying on the long flight from the U.S. to Australia and people and getting into your head and being annoyed. Don't they know this is annoying to people? Mm. And why don't they shut that kid up? And this is a long flight. They should have made plans and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I, don't, I just heard this recently. I don't know the full story she shares. But then she says, and then what if you learn that the child is crying because his dead mother's body is in the cargo and they're taking her home, you know, to be buried? And your whole perspective, like my heart just started to, I felt that even as a simple example. Mm -hmm. um, and your whole perspective can change just with a thought. So to a certain degree, we all recognize the truth of that. So back to your question. So I'm operating from a place of in any moment, that universal intelligence can create opportunities for me. And I'm cooperating. Right? I'm either open or I'm not. As I said before, I'm resisting or I'm not. And if I'm open, I'm either to some degree consciously or not saying yes or no to what's coming up. So I'm not I, I'm thrilled with my work in the three principles. I'm I from the beginning, from the very beginning, I've been on fire about bringing it to as many people as possible. And along the way, I realized that was really, I mean, I suppose there's a degree to which it's kind of an altruistic, you know, kind of thing. But it's really my love for me, <laughs> I realized, that I'm loving me on, or wanting to express that on a, in a great, bigger way than I'm used to thinking about me. You know, my self-care isn't just, you know, get a massage when I need, want one. My self-care is... I want to live in my kingdom of heaven, and in my kingdom of heaven, everyone I see is living in their kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've got to be a part of that, right? Right. So I'm open to anything showing up, and I'm wanting to take what I do to a higher level and more effective level and to reach more people. And so I'm beginning to move into internet things. And along my my radar comes this uh, neuroscience program called Higher Brain Living and the, the doctor who created it, Dr. Michael Cotton. Now I'm not looking for anything else to add or do, but it had something about it that captured my interest and I've learned to pay attention to that. Right. So I paid attention and just followed it. Like I didn't know if that meant I was just supposed to find out about a new venue in town to do presentations at or meet someone, or I didn't know, but it's, I've, I'm following that inner guidance. And I go hear about this, makes total sense, totally in alignment and resonates um, with the three principles from my perspective. Others might disagree. Um, but it, because it has to do with neuroscience in the brain, it also offers an actual physiological technique um, that this doctor discovered and developed through 30 years of research a gentle touch technique using the energy meridians of the body to literally release the lower brain's survival stress grip on us and our lives and our functioning and release that to go to where it was designed to go which is through the whole brain and particularly to the higher brain and he show, showed two live demonstrations of it and when I saw that 
something hit me and said, I, I knew they were authentic and weren't being faked. I could see the innate wisdom that these people expressed because you could ask them questions. And I just said, I've got to find out more about this. And as I did, I was bowled over and I realized, you know what? I've got to get trained in this. And as I proceeded to not only learn more, personally experience it, and get trained in it, I was very honored to connect um, well with Dr. Michael Cotton, who created this, and he invited me, and actually he ended up inviting my son, Zach, not, not unrelated to his, I can see, to his living the three principles at that point in his life. He invited us to be a part of the national leadership team with him. And ever since, so this is like three or maybe going on four years ago, um, we've been traveling the country uh, bringing higher brain living. Um, as it's open to any adult person who is or wants to be a change agent, but I've been specifically reaching out to mental health and addictions professionals because I know those fields, when they become more aware and more evolved, they're going to embrace this and run with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, through that, I'm now being asked to speak more, and I'm evolving a way to articulate the neuroscience correlates, the brain correlates, with what we talk about in the three principles. They're completely different areas, but if some of, if you or some of your listeners or viewers know about Dr. Uh, Bill Pettit, mm -hmm. uh, he's a um, psychiatrist who's been a leading teacher and proponent of the three principles from early, early on, and he often will bring in medical, biological, pharmacological language and explanations related to the principles that are really informative and helpful. So I see this the same way. It brings in a language about another area that that exists within the formed world, our brains, um, and our physical worlds and our physical bodies, um, uh, but is not trying to be the three principles or on the level of the three principles. So I don't know if that's clear or what. But. Well, I'll take a shot at, at what I might be understanding. Sure. Is that my experience with the three principles is that Sid has articulated an insight into how we as human beings experience life and can participate in life. And insight into those principles creates for us at different levels of insight, we have different levels of uh, connection and access to, to wisdom, to guidance, to creativity, to inspiration. And the greater our access to the the greater our insight, the greater our access to wisdom, creativity, insight, guidance. And it sounds to me like the potential in the higher brain living technology is to remove any physical barriers to that sort of insight. So it's like it facilitates that functioning on a physical level. It doesn't replace or obviate that the change happens psycho-spiritually. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. One of, we, we talk about um, the missing link. Actually, there's, that's talked about on the three principles side, too, in a very different way. But on the higher brain living side of things, the missing link and why, for instance, self-help often either doesn't work or it seems to work and then it, fall, it you slide back is that our brain needs to physiologically change or be rewired or there's different ways to talk about that. And what the higher brain living um, process or protocol does is it literally allows the innate energy in our system to flow in a way where it can, in its way, 
um, free up and rewire, so to speak, or physiologically um, uh, open up the way the prefrontal cortex and the whole brain was designed to be used. Um, so that will help in anything in life because we bring our brain to anything and everything in life, don't we, whether mm -hmm. we're cognizant of that or not. So it, and another way to say this, it turned, it do, every thought, every experience, every level of consciousness has a correlate in the human brain. So what Sid experienced, what we experience as we learn and transform through understanding the three principles or what people learn and experience and transform that helps them in other modalities in life correlates with something that's going on in the brain. So doesn't it make sense that the most highly complex and highly evolved part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, is and must be involved in the highest states of consciousness, understandings, and ways of experiencing and functioning in life. And it's been proven scientifically that that part of the brain is highly underutilized. In fact, a couple decades ago when um, measurement techniques got sophisticated enough to measure it, they went in and they measured the activity in the prefrontal cortex and it was so low that they called it, and maybe they still call it, I'm not sure, the silent area of the brain. So mm. what's going on here? And that really reinforced that whole thing that Einstein said about how we only use 10% of our higher brain's potential. So we have a whole explanation of, well, why is that and why don't we use that part of our brains as much as we need to, which we could go into here. Um, but um, the bottom line is there's now at least this one way that I know of through higher brain living that very profoundly and very directly um, energizes and awakens that part of the brain in a way where it stays awake more and more and more and more and and you will organically get the understandings that are embedded in the three principles but if you add in the actual three principles language and teachings it only gels it and accelerates it even further mm -hmm. um, in fact when my son had his really profound shift during um, or during a higher brain living session afterwards he was sitting next to me because we were in a, a large group training session and he was just he hadn't it hadn't all gelled for him yet he was like sitting there going oh my god and just kinda like what and and I and I smiled because I knew <laughs> something profound was going on with him and that it was good and right then I turned to him because we were in the back of the room and, and there were many people there and it was an opportunity and I turned to him and I said Think about the three principles and Sid and how does your understanding of the three principles help you and all of a sudden his eyes lit up and got huge and he grabbed a piece of paper and he just started writing and writing on a tablet a page or two maybe and after that he was able to, go, to say this is what happened and here's how it connects to the three principles and it was just exquisite and I don't even want to attempt to try to um, say what he said he says it so well and it was right on and it just verified for me that you know on the one hand it's we want to preserve the integrity of the three principles on the other hand Sid often talked about the oneness and how form and formless is really two sides of the same coin and another name for the oneness is integral mm -hmm. so it that to me means whether through form or formless the, the essence is the same the direction is the same and it all plays a part we're using our bodies we're using our language right now to interact and people are getting something inside those who are because they're listening in a way that allows them to they may or may not realize what they're getting is their gift to themselves that we're you and I Molly are contributing to that but they're listening in a way where they're accessing something within themselves and benefiting from that themselves and there and what I realized after getting training in higher brain living was my work in the three principles was literally training changing brain physiology through the interaction that 
the grip of the lower brain was being released and that energy was going to the higher brain because if it wasn't, you couldn't use that part of the brain to understand what we were talking about with the three principles. It right. wouldn't make sense. So, the, so it's like the, our interaction kind of coaxes the understanding in that direction and gently changes the brain's physiology mm -hmm. um, from the inside out. And sometimes there's dramatic breakthroughs that it's not just an in incremental process but breakthrough process. So I see no conflict. In fact, it, you can probably tell I'm enthusiastic and I see uh, <laughs> just a beautiful, beautiful gift. It's almost like divine mind, a universal mind, or if you want to call that God, whatever perspective you come from, said, you know what? Human beings need more help right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reveal the three principles in a more powerful way to Sid Banks, and he can start to spread those, and all those people can spread it. And I'm going to bring other ways into the, my creation to help people because, my God, <laughs> we need to wake up here. And right. so more and more is coming into the creation to help us wake up. Right. Yeah. You know, the... One of the things that's resonating with me is your comment about the form and the formless. It's all one. So you're, you're not talking about try this mechanical method of enlightenment that's as right. though it replaces or obviates insight. It's, here's something that, that neurologically puts us into a, a state of readiness, alignment, awakening. And, and my suspicion matches what I think you said, which is that the experience of insight in itself does create a neurological change. Yes. Um, and I think this is probably what we see sometimes in spontaneous healings, that there are spiritual processes that have physical concomitants, and it just makes sense that there would be. That's right new neural pathways are created and one of the beautiful gifts we have and properties of the brain and the, of the prefrontal cortex is that it can continue to create new neural pathways till the moment of death in, in, in a, a uh, in-depth three-hour e-course that I just completed that actually is available to anybody who would want to contact me I'll send it out free and it's been approved by the way for mental health and addictions professionals for CEU credits, um, I cite some of the science and one of the breakthroughs that contributes and validates higher brain living is in the area not only of neuroplasticity but neurogenesis. They found that our brain, they used to think the brain can't regenerate itself. Well it actually can and in ways that are being discovered and enhanced and it actually can create new neural pathways right up till death in old age and amazing um, scientific um, programs are being created now to help people like reverse Alzheimer's and things like this. A great book to read on that is by Dr. Norman, Norman Deutsch called The Brain That Changes Itself. Um, but I wanted to, I, I see, lost my train of thought there. There's a reason I was, oh, the neuro, new neural pathways. Back to whether you what learning the principles will do will tune the receiver of your mind into this greater power and understanding um, that we call the three principles. Higher brain living will tune the receiver in neuro neurologically. Mm -hmm. it will tune the brain. Does that both are tuned and then need to receive? Sid Banks said mind is the energy, is the is the power that energizes the brain. It doesn't, it's, so it does, it's not change the brain and produce it. Right. No, no it tune into it. So if you can, t if your brain is already made to tune into it and, you know, be turbocharged and just fly, then let's use every means. I mean, it's just common sense. Live a healthy lifestyle, get rest. Don't harm yourself with harmful drugs. Eat healthy nutrition. You can do things on those levels that enhance the ability to tune in and receive. Right. You and I having this kind of a conversation, 
without my dog barking and without kids running around here or something, my grandkids or whatever. It's just common sense. It's a way to tune in, listen, and receive more of what right. life has. Those are really nice distinctions, Craig. I, I think when people, um, my suspicion is that when folks in the Three Principles community get um, anxious or concerned about technologies like this, it may be that they think you're suggesting that this technology produces. That's right. That's and right. It, it doesn't, it, but it, I like the tuning metaphor. The radio station is broadcasting. That's right. Irregardless. That's right. And we're set up as re receivers irregardless. That's so right. why not tune it so that the reception can be as, as seamless and static-free as possible? That's right. And Dr. Bill Pennett, I believe, speaks about pharmacology that way, that some psychiatric meds um, for a period of time can help a troubled person through a change in biochemistry tune in more to the health from within them mm -hmm. in the and to the benefit of the three principles counseling they're getting. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I'm going to share my screen again for folks. Let's see here. Get the right one. This um, shows you if you are watching on my web page, you might want to click over. And this looks like it's clickable, but for you watching, it's probably not. You're going to have to type in the link to bit.ly forward slash Craig dash numeral three uppercase P that will take you to this hangout on Google Plus and there is a place on that event page hangout page on Google Plus where you can chat with us and ask questions share your insights and observations this link is to the website where you can learn more about the technology the, the neuroscience that Craig is talking about higherbrainliving.com. Could I jump in there, Molly? You if sure you, may. And if you want, you can either find us through that. That's the national website. If you are in the Minnesota area or just want to connect and see um, our local center here in Minneapolis, the website is um, higherbrainlivingnortheastminneapolis.com. Okay, let's see how I can do here. Yeah, Higher Brain Living, Northeast, no, not N-E, just completely written out, Northeast, I know it's kind of long, Northeast, <laughs> and Minneapolis.com, correct, there it is. Right. That looks right, great, thank you. And then finally, for anyone who is curious about the three principles or looking for more information, um, Rudy and Jenny Kennard have created an amazing online resource, threeprinciplesmovies.com. There are dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds, of four to 30-minute clips with the most experienced and skilled three principles teachers and facilitators in the world, um, people telling their stories of insight. It's a terrific resource. So let's see. Stop sharing my screen. Da -da -da. Stop. There we go. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing those because. Uh, I'm sure people who are watching this now or, or when it's archived will will want to check out one or both of those because it's, I don't know of two better resources on the planet for, for what this is about. Right, right. So what is involved? You said a little bit about this is a, um, the higher brain living technology is a process of touch. What, tell us more about that. Um, let me preface that with if people contact me um, and I can give my email address or, or do you want prefer that versus going through you, Molly, or do you want them to go through you? Um, it doesn't matter to me to tell you the truth. Okay, my email address is Craig P, C -R -A -I -G -P at I am higherbrainliving.com. I am 
higherbrainliving.com. Craig P. at IamHigherBrainLiving.com. Um, I can send out a free three video education series, um, three 13 minute videos by Dr. Michael Cotton that gives the basics and sh actually demonstrates the technique I'm about to describe. So I, I wanted to get that out because I know describing it may or may not be easy for people to picture in their minds. Okay. Um, the actual physical component of it. Um, yep. Okay. The physical component of it is the client, the sessions are 45 minutes long. They come in and um, lay down on either a massage table or a chiropractor type table. And, you know, there are these energy meridians in the body that Chinese medicine is known about. And one of the cool things about higher brain living is it combines modern science with this ancient wisdom that's been around in the yogic and traditions and the Chinese medicine traditions and others. That's recognized that there's this intelligence in energetic form in the body. And mm -hmm. that the more we've understood it and can work with it, we can get various kinds of benefits from just stress release to healing to and now to actual awakening we're having more and more of our clients report actual enlightenment experiences through higher brain living and that's taking things to another whole level and I honestly I don't think even Dr. Cotton knows what he's brought forward, the potential of it. Um, you know, or another way to say that is, I don't think we know the full potential of the human brain. And if we've got a way to unlock its potential, wow, look out. Um, so um, he figured out through his studies and research a code of g very specific, gentle touch in specific points on the body in a specific way, in a specific sequence, with specific vectors. Um, in my e three-hour e-course that I mentioned I will send out to people um, uh, that was um, approved for professional education credits, I go much more into this science. There's a term called piezoelectric or piezoelectricity which um, Dr. John Oshman has been a leading proponent and, and researcher in that area where he has shown that a specific kind of touch on the body in a specific way putting very little energy, physical energy in, can release a whole lot of energy. So not only did Dr. Cotton work with that concept and get this latent intelligent energy in the body released, but then he figured out a code in the system that allows it to go through the lower brain, releasing its grip, um, and awakening, energizing and awakening the prefrontal cortex, directing it to that over a series of roughly weekly tw 22 sessions. And the, the question, well, why 22 sessions? Because as research showed, by then there was enough energizing and new neural pathways that it could become um, sustainable for a person. Okay. Um, so the person lays down, face down, um, the, and, and basically re just receives the session like they would a massage. They don't sit there thinking of anything or working on anything. They just um, experience what happens. Um, there are two, when you look at the, the um, demonstrations, this is the part that to me is going to really compel me because there are two things that happen in response to the higher brain being energized. And sometimes they happen right away and sometimes they take a few sessions. And they look strange from the outside, especially the second one. But from the inside, they feel amazing. And you know you're awakening and going in the right, quote unquote, right inner direction. The first thing that happens when the prefrontal cortex is energized um, sufficiently is this deep salutogenic breath, we call it, comes out of a person, starts to come out. Salute means well-being, genesis means origin of. So without purposely taking a deep breath, all of a sudden you're, this deep breathing starts coming out of you that feels amazing. It's the higher brain going, being awake enough to go, this is good, we want more energy, and it starts to create a deep 
breathing. So this deep, massive breathing starts to happen, and sometimes it starts slowly and builds up to the point where many clients say, I felt like my whole body was breathing, not just my lungs. Wow. Then, either right away or in time, the higher brain is awake enough where it goes, okay, now we can start to dump this, the lifelong stress that's been held in this physiological system from the system. And the most efficient way stress is dumped is through a sine wave, S-I-N-E. Mm -hmm. The body starts to feel like it wants to move, like my wife joked at the beginning, like you're doing the worm. Oh, great. Feel like that. But, and we just tell our clients, don't purposely do that. But if you start to feel the inclination, don't resist it. Right. So when that starts to come, clients let themselves, and they notice as they let themselves, it's like they feel like they're waking up more. It feels really good, and they can feel the stress going out more and more and more out of their system. And when the stress is going out, what's coming in? A feeling of well-being, a feeling of consciousness and being awake because that part of the brain is being turned on and tuning in and receiving more of what it's designed to receive. So then there's a point in the session where the client sits up and gets some context, then they lie on their back and get some context, and they return to their face down and get some context, and then the session is ended. And then we give generally a week for the client to integrate that physiologically, and there's also a guidebook that goes um, with, um, with the program to help um, clarify some things and and actually help the person. I love this perspective that it's not just enough to have an awakened higher brain. It's who are you becoming? What do you do with that in your life, in your world? So it helps a person see that and take responsibility and then create their own application of that in their life. We don't tell them how to do that. They mm -hmm. decide what to do, but then they see how to apply where and how to apply that in their life so it's not just they walk around in an, in an awake, enlightened state and kind of float around, but they go, oh, there's a direction in my life that fits for me. And then I make the, this personal transformation in these horizontal directions, mm -hmm. um, mental, emotional, physical, relationships, work and finances, lifestyle, things like that as well as that vertical dimension of waking up more and more and more and more. Right. right. Because if it doesn't translate into engagement That's right. in the real world, it's just... Right. Then it's, then it's still operating on a thought or belief that it's not integral. Right. That it, we're separate and that's, oh, that world is kind of, I don't know what, a bad place or, a, or a nothing. It's just an illusion. It has no place. Are you kidding? It's you. Right. You know, right. it's you and it's not you. I mean, you're that from which it is manifesting, but it's it's the formless, which is who you in essence are, taking form in who you are manifesting as, and there's a becoming in it, right? Yes. It's not done. Yes. That's exciting. You no, know, I and I think it's I think it's sacred that Absolutely. get to participate well, in this created world of form. It's not at all trivial. It's sacred. That's the feel, predominant feeling, at least for me as a facilitator, doing both um, a higher brain living and three principles sessions. And I've been brought to tears in both because of the sacred feeling that emerges sometimes. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Wow. <laughs> hmm. Well, while I, while I um, just sit and bask in this nice feeling, I'm going to flash that screen one more time for everyone. Uh, let's see. Come on. There we go. So the, the highlighted email address is a way to get in touch with Craig. He can send you a free video series that has been approved for CEU credit for mental health professionals. Um, below that, for general information about um, insight, interviews, teachings about the three principles, threeprinciplesmovies.com. If you're in the Minneapolis area, this link is to the website for Higher Brain Living Northeast Minneapolis. 
and that will connect you with Craig um, directly. Nationally, higherbrainliving.com. And this top link um, is to our Google Plus event page. And since we're wrapping up, you're still welcome to go there and chat, but that's uh, we'll be finished with that in just a couple of minutes. You know, Molly, I should add, um, one of the major roles I have on the national level with Higher Brain Living is that I can educate and enroll people in certification training. So if there's some, and that's that's what that e-course um, is all about. The longer in-depth one not only gives you the in-depth exposure, but at the end there's certification and training information. So if people say, you know what, I'd like to look at that to add to my practice or to start a practice or to shift my practice to into something new, um, contact me, I'll get them that, and then I can actually um, talk with you and enroll you. And the, it's an annual training. It starts online, but the hands-on portion is only once a year in July. And um, the uh, enrollment is limited, and we're over half full at this point. And there's also an early enrollment, a significant early enrollment discount that um, I don't know when it'll expire, but it's it's available right now. So if somebody feels interested, um, uh, they should uh, contact me about that part of it. That's great. Thank you for bringing that out because I know that we have a couple of mental health professionals uh, watching at this moment, actually, and coaches. So that's great. Oh, Craig, this has been wonderful. Is there what would you like to offer as a takeaway for folks today? Well, first, I want to make sure I get in my gratitude to you. I mean, it's you know we connected on Facebook, and I'm not sure who reached out to who first. And I remember I thought you were in the UK at first, and then but then we talked and we hit it off, and you offered me this opportunity, and and it's just been a joy for me to do this, and I, I know you do great work uh, in in your work as well. Um, the takeaway, you know, I go right deeper into my heart when I think about that. Maybe you can start to hear it. my voice. My son says I get moist. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's so much. We are far more than we realize. Life is far more. It's, it's, it is divine love. It's pure love. And if you aren't seeing it and experiencing it that way, I'm not advocating adopt that philosophy. I'm advocating explore the resources that say they point to that or can help with that and find out for yourself and don't waste a moment because in one sense we're very fragile you know we don't know if we're going to be here next, tomorrow um, and this is an opportunity right here right now to wake up to your heart and the wisdom there that's calling you and be aware and this is being be very emphasized in higher brain living the lower brain is designed to keep you safe so it sees sameness as safety. So on a primarily unconscious level, it will constantly try to keep you the same and keep you in closed loops and not change and not do anything different because it's trying to protect you. But it doesn't see that you have greater reasons to be alive, you have greater survival potential, and you're made to thrive, and you need your higher brain and your whole brain and your, this whole understanding to do that. So take the steps forward when you feel it, because if you don't, that lower brain seduces us into procrastinating and just waiting and waiting and waiting and not moving forward. So seize the moment. Huh? That's a great point, Craig. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, it's a pleasure to do this the second Friday of every month. I have a wholeness hangout. Next, fr next Friday in uh, February, on February 6th, my guest will be Terry Lutberger, a master certified coach, a fabulous woman. I've known Terry for almost 20 years. And we're going to talk about new horizons in coaching and what do we do as coaches when we're not coaching people on the content of their thinking. 
So thanks again, Craig, very much. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.